Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Damien! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 demon movies. Remember who you are! For this list, we'll be looking at flicks where an evil spirit or spirits plays a major role in the demonic plot. Beware, because we will be summoning spoilers. Number 20. Sinister Supernatural horror movies saw a mild comeback during the mid-2000s, but the genre roared from the grave in the 2010s. While Sinister wasn't a game-changer, Scott Derrickson's film was a welcome addition to this new golden age. Something similar can be said about its antagonist, a pagan deity known as Bagul. A deity? What kind of deity? Uh, a, a very obscure one, dating back to Babylonian times, named Bagul, the eater of children. Although not a household name, this demon will haunt your nightmares with a design reminiscent of a black metal boogeyman. What makes Bagul especially sinister is that he works through children, manipulating them to commit unspeakable deeds before devouring their souls. Don't worry, Daddy. I'll make you famous again. The cinematography also creates a foreboding ambiance, as if the camera is possessed. This is especially apparent in the Super 8 sequences, which use old-school methods to create a sense of gritty realism. Number 19. Pumpkinhead When you say this movie's title out loud, you might envision a satanic great pumpkin possessing Charlie Brown and his friends. Actually, the titular Pumpkinhead looks more like a cross between a xenomorph and a predator with a demonic twist. This isn't surprising, as the film marks the directorial debut of Stan Winston, whose credits include Aliens and Predator. Winston even reunited with Bishop himself, Lance Henriksen, for Pumpkinhead. This cult classic owes much of its success to Henriksen's charisma and Winston's practical effects expertise. Pumpkinhead functions as a demon movie, a slasher flick, and a revenge thriller, resulting in a unique entity. Perhaps it was too unique for the time, falling short at the box office. Pumpkinhead came back with a vengeance on home media, however. Number 18. Night of the Demon While most people associate classic demon movies with the 60s and 70s, this British film was ahead of the game. Released in 1957, Night of the Demon, or Curse of the Demon as it was known in the U.S., included several tropes that we now associate with the genre. A satanic cult, a seance, and an evil supernatural creature. Although director Jacques Tourneur and co-writer Charles Bennett wanted to keep the demon concealed throughout, producer Hal E. Chester strongly disagreed and ultimately got his way. While it's debatable what would have been scarier, the demon effects are well executed given the budget and time period. Because I believe you now. I believe that in five minutes something monstrous and horrible is going to happen. And when it does, you're going to be here so that whatever happens to me will happen to you. The film wisely doesn't rely too much on the demon, though, with most of the tension stemming from the eerie atmosphere. Number 17. Session 9 We can't think of a more appropriate setting for a psychological horror film than an abandoned asylum. Using Danvers State Hospital as a shooting location, Session 9 follows four men tasked with removing asbestos from the premises. The hospital is haunted by ghosts of the past. Hello, Gordon. Whether these ghosts are figurative or literal is left ambiguous. Either way, this sinister setting has a way of bringing out inner demons. The most unnerving presence in the film belongs to Simon, one of patient Mary Hobbs' many personalities. Maybe Simon would like to tell me what happened. Of course, some have theorized that Simon isn't an alternative personality, but the spirit Ganyus Loki or a demon. This makes Session 9 a difficult movie to categorize, but it's that unknown element that makes the experience so memorable. Number 16. The Exorcism of Emily Rose Very loosely based on the true story of Annalise Michel, The Exorcism of Emily Rose immediately drew comparisons to a certain 1973 demonic classic. While the parallels are hard to ignore, this is also one of the most distinctive entries to the supernatural horror genre. For starters, it's just as much a legal drama, which may have caught some viewers off guard. Some of you may find yourself unable to reconcile Emily's beliefs or those of the defendant with your own. 
you may not believe demons exist. This direction adds a new layer to a familiar formula, though, resulting in a film that works on two levels. The courtroom drama is compelling, and the supernatural scenes, while limited to a PG-13 rating, still get away with some shocking imagery. It's all elevated by great performances from Laura Linney, Tom Wilkinson, and Jennifer Carpenter as Emily Rose. Number 15, Drag Me to Hell. Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. Although Sam Raimi hit it big with the Spider-Man trilogy, that didn't stop him from returning to his campy roots with Drag Me to Hell. I'm scared. The title speaks for itself as characters are literally dragged into the pits of hell in this horror film. After a hideous old lady curses Allison Lohman and she finds out she'll be haunted by the Lamia demon, though, the underworld almost sounds like a welcome escape. With anvils dropping on people's heads and possessed talking goats, Drag Me to Hell has the essence of a demented cartoon. It's silly, it's scary, and it's just a ton of fun. Number 14, Insidious. Joseph Bishara went from scoring 2009's Night of the Demons to playing a demon the following year in James Wan's Insidious. Also serving as the film's composer, Bishara made his acting debut as Lipstick Face. He is looking. While that might not be the most intimidating name, this red-faced demon has been invading our nightmares for over a decade now. In addition to being a turning point for Bishara and Juan, Insidious was something of a comeback for veteran actress Lynn Shay. While she had already cemented her Scream Queen status, her turn as psychic Elise Rainier gave Shay a chance to shine like never before. You're going to see a lot of confusing things, things you don't understand, but do not question them and do not speak in any way. While Insidious didn't break any new ground, the performances, craft, and overarching sense of dread more than delivered, spawning a franchise in the process. Number 13, The Witch. This period horror movie stands out for a few reasons. It saw Anya Taylor-Joy break out as a certified scream queen and one of her generation's most capable actresses. It established Robert Eggers as a wicked visual storyteller, which isn't surprising since he came from a production design background. The Witch also further solidified A24's reputation for ambitious horror films that would be considered too out there for other studios. Caleb, hold the gates! Caleb! <laughs> Not many executives would greenlight a script where a billy goat and Satan are one and the same. What sounds bizarre on paper is made terrifying in The Witch, however. With subtle storytelling and ungodly imagery that we'll never forget, it's an almost otherworldly experience. And that's no bull. Or goat in this case. What dost thou want? Number 12. Paranormal Activity. It seems to me that that's what we're dealing with, something that's basically connected to you. Upon its expansion into wide release, Legions praised Paranormal Activity as the scariest movie of all time. Disturbing. Are you scared? Dis I, it, it, it's a little bizarre. While people might have overhyped it in retrospect, the film still holds up as a cool supernatural thriller. You stop following me with the camera! In an age where horror movies are notorious for being flashy and gory, this found footage flick derived most of its scares through what the audience doesn't see, thanks to a plot revolving around a young couple who's supposedly being haunted by a demon in their new home. What's here? What? What are you talking about? I don't know. I feel it. I feel it breathing on me. Admit it, the first time you watched Paranormal Activity, you jumped out of your seat on several occasions and couldn't get a wink of sleep that night. Well, you want to stay here and sleep in this f***ing bed and get dragged down the hall again? I don't think so. So be sure to choose your bedfellows wisely, or you may end up with one of them turning into this. Number 11, Hellraiser. Creating a cool-looking demon is easier said than done. More often than not, movie demons come off as too generic. Gazing upon any of the demonic beings in Hellraiser, however, you instantly know what movie they're from. The most iconic is the pinheaded leader of the Cenobites, who was later dubbed Pinhead. Oh no! 
tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Director Clive Barker drapes his film in a gothic aesthetic that only could have come out of the 80s. To us, it's a film that perfectly defines the splatterpunk movement, delivering gore and the kind of rebellious imagery you'd find on a heavy metal album cover. Not leaving us so soon, are you? Speaking of music, there's a haunting sophistication to Christopher Young's score that makes the audience feel as if they're in the presence of the devil. Number 10. The Babadook The Babadook takes us back to a time when a pop-up book full of creepy illustrations was more than enough to make us sleep with the lights on, assuming we got any sleep at all. This is what he wears on top. He's funny, don't you think? See him in your room at night. Mom? Does it hurt the boy? Although this psychological horror film taps into our childhood fears of the boogeyman, its central theme is surprisingly mature. We won't give away whether the titular Babadook is real or not. What we will say is that the devilish character is tied to repressed emotions. The Babadook demonstrates that there are some demons we simply can't run away from or vanquish entirely. If we confront these demons, though, we may be able to manage and live with them. It's unsettling, but oddly comforting at the same time. Number 9. It We know what some of you are thinking. The creature from It is an ancient alien, not a demon. It is indeed a trans-dimensional being, but that doesn't mean it's not also a demonic entity. It has all the calling cards of a demon, feeding off fear, manipulating the vulnerable, and taking on many different forms, including Pennywise the Dancing Clown. hi Georgie. What a nice boat. Do you want it back? For years, the 1990 miniseries was the definitive version of Stephen King's classic novel. While we'll always have a soft spot for that horror milestone, Andy Muschietti gave us the definitive adaptation divided into two parts. The first half is the standout, capturing the joyous nostalgia of childhood, the loss of innocence, and the demons that separate the two. <laughs> Number 8. Wreck que nadie se mueva de aquí, ¿eh? Vale. Bueno, y tú deja de grabar de una puta vez, joder. Advertised to American audiences as the movie that inspired the 2008 remake Quarantine. This Spanish found footage film unsurprisingly shares a similar premise with the later flick. Wreck follows a TV reporter interviewing a group of firefighters on their night shift. When called upon to rescue an elderly woman locked inside her apartment, they uncover a much more hazardous story. Mira! The film makes good use of the shaky cam technique and creating a claustrophobic atmosphere. But where quarantine stuck to the mutated virus approach, Rack injects an unexpected demonic twist that's further explored in its sequels. Number 7. The Conjuring We are beyond terrified. We don't know what's going on or what to do. Can you help us? The Conjuring is one of those classic haunted house movies where the homeowners don't move out even after their dog turns up dead and one of their daughters starts sleepwalking. A very powerful demonic has latched itself onto her. While it doesn't revolutionize the genre, this is actually an effective thriller carried by a genuinely chilling mood, convincing performances, and a surprisingly touching relationship between the two paranormal investigators played by Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. Well, we've been called demonologists. It's one name for us. Ghost hunters, paranormal researchers. Kooks. <laughs> Wackos. But we prefer to be known simply as Ed and Lorraine Warren. It also has one of the creepiest dolls ever in the haunted Annabelle, who sadly became less credible with her 2014 prequel slash spinoff. <laughs> Number 6. Poltergeist At the turn of the 1980s, more and more parents started to argue that we needed a new rating to bridge the gap between PG and R-rated fare. The PG-rated poltergeist undoubtedly fueled this argument. By today's standards, this story about a suburban family that's haunted by wicked entities is clearly PG-13 material.
Never afraid to frighten your little ones, the film overflows with creepy imagery, inventive antagonists, and effects that still hold up quite nicely. After watching it, you'll never look at a clown doll the same way again. Number 5. Hereditary Of all the supernatural horror movies to come out so far this century, Hereditary isn't the most mainstream, but it's the best as far as we're concerned. Why? Because it's the kind of film that the devil himself would create. And we say that as a compliment. Mom, what are you doing? What's going on? You were sleepwalking. Ari Aster's feature debut crawls under your skin, making the audience question everything that's happening on screen. Whether it's a shocking death or a brutal confession, Hereditary plays with your expectations in all the right ways. We made a pact with something. Something that is in this house. I don't know what it is, but it is after Peter. It takes us on a roller coaster of terror that'll have you sympathizing with certain characters one minute and fearing them the next. It all builds to a scary as hell conclusion that'll inspire rewatches. After all, the devil is in the details. Number 4. The Evil Dead Why are you torturing me like this? Why? Sam Raimi established his knack for mixing absurd horror with absurd humor through this 1981 cult classic. <laughs> On a low budget, Raimi crafted a gross-out, gut-bursting good time that really stood out from the crowd. The Cabin in the Woods setting may be familiar, but The Evil Dead distinguishes itself with gleeful gore, impressive stop-motion visuals, and let's not forget the demonically possessed trees. It would go on to inspire a 2013 remake-slash-reboot, which, while not as funny as its predecessor, is still positively to die for. Number 3. Rosemary's Baby We have to make a baby. Having a demon inside you is one thing. The idea of that demon also being your unborn child, however, is blood-curdling beyond belief. Somebody help me! <laughs> what makes Rosemary's Baby a masterful psychological horror movie is how it plays with both the protagonist's mind and the audience's minds. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? For much of the film, we're not sure if Rosemary is losing her sanity or if she's at the center of a demonic cult's evil scheme. It amounts to one hell of a climax in which the truth stares Rosemary dead in the eye. What have you done to him, you maniac? Satan is his father, not Guy. Number two, The Omen. Only if he is within you can you defeat the son of the devil. Although we never see Satan spawn in Rosemary's Baby, his offspring takes center stage here. The son of the devil. The definitive Antichrist movie, The Omen has no shortage of immortal frights involving a nanny hanging herself, a household accident involving a tricycle, and the reveal of Damien's unusual birthmark. He bears a birthmark. A sequence of sixes. Any parent who names their kid Damien is pretty much setting them up to be evil, though. Even if it doesn't take an exorcist to figure out the little bugger has malevolence running through his veins, Richard Donner's disturbing direction keeps you constantly on edge. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Jennifer's Body, misunderstood upon release, this horror comedy has only improved with time. Jennifer! Jennifer! The Possession, familiar yet still frightening enough to check out. Demons, for fans of Italian horror cinema. <laughs> Annabelle Creation, the rare horror prequel that's way better than its predecessor. The Devil's Candy, paint the town red. Oh my god. Is that true? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Exorcist
Rosemary's Baby, The Omen, and The Exorcist are often grouped together as a spiritual trilogy of demonic child pictures, with the latter being the crowning achievement. You're gonna die up there. Nowadays, it's hard to imagine a film leaving audiences running out of the screening room screaming. You know what she did? <laughs> Your canting daughter! Holding nothing back, The Exorcist served up scares unlike any other horror movie, with stunning direction, a tense musical score, terrifying visuals, and captivating performances, particularly from the young Linda Blair as the demonically possessed Reagan. The power of Christ compels you! It's so head-twistingly shocking that theaters actually supplied audience members with vomit bags. Anyone else see the irony in that? What is it? <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.